Twice a year, in most regions within the United States and around the world, we change the time of day to coincide with the summer versus the winter months. Spring forward, meaning in the springtime the clocks jump ahead one hour, and fall back, meaning we lose an hour in the winter months. But where did this come from? And why do we put ourselves through this twice a year? Let's look back to where it all came from in the first place. In a letter to the editor of the Journal of Paris, Benjamin Franklin jokingly recommended that people get out of bed earlier in the morning to minimize the use of candles and lamp oil. There are earlier suggestions to implement such a clock change. To name a few, in 1895, New Zealand entomologist and astronomer George Hudson proposed the idea of changing clocks by two hours every spring to the Wellington Philosophical Society, as he wanted to have more daylight hours to devote to collecting and examining insects. And in 1907, British resident William Willett presented the idea as a way to save energy. Despite receiving some serious consideration, it was never implemented. It wasn't until World War I that daylight savings time was practically implemented. In 1916, the locations within the German Empire set clocks ahead one hour in an effort to use less power for lighting and to save fuel for the war effort. Many countries soon followed, and after the war ended, they all went back to standard time. During World War II, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt re-established the idea of daylight savings time in the United States. It was called wartime. Wartime was temporary, and although it began in February of 1942, it only lasted until the end of September of 1945. Then in 1966, the Uniform Time Act established a yearly time change. Daylight savings time would begin the last Sunday in April and end the last Sunday in October formally implementing the tradition that many of us currently practice. During the 1973 oil embargo, the United States Congress ordered a year-round period of daylight savings time to save energy to run from January 1974 to April of 1975. The plan did little to save energy, and in 1974, the U.S. switched back to the established time schedule. Proponents of daylight savings time generally argue that it saves energy promotes outdoor leisure activity in the evening and in the summer, and is therefore good for physical and psychological health. It reduces traffic accidents and reduces crime. Later sunset times from daylight savings time are thought to affect behavior. For example, increasing participation in after-school sports programs or outdoor afternoon sports, such as golf and attendance at professional events. Advocates of daylight savings time argue that having more hours of daylight between the end of a typical workday and evening induces people to consume other goods and services, thereby helping the economy. Opponents argue that daylight savings time disrupts human circadian rhythms, which negatively impact human health and well-being, that it increases fatal traffic collisions, and that the actual energy savings are inconclusive. Year-round standard is often proposed to be the preferred option for public health and safety. Daylight savings time clock shifts have the obvious disadvantage of complexity. People who work across time zone boundaries need to keep track of multiple daylight savings time rules, as not all locations observe it the same way. The length of the calendar day becomes variable. It is no longer always 24 hours. Disruption to meetings, travel, broadcasts, billing systems, and records management are common and can be expensive. During an autumn transition from 2 a.m. to 1 a.m., a clock reads 1 a.m. through 1.59 a.m. twice, possibly leading to confusion. What do you think of daylight savings time? Are you glad we changed the clocks, or do you think it's a waste of time? You see what I did there? Let us know in the comments and what your thoughts are, and we'll see you next time.